Amen. We're going to go ahead today, and um, we are going to continue in our, our, our series. I'm only going to be about 25 minutes, maybe, if that. And then we're going to do communion. But I want to... Uh, Let's go ahead and pray first, actually. In Jesus' name, Lord, we come before you today. Lord, I pray that you give us ears to hear and eyes to see. I pray that you would give us a heart to respond. Lord, let us be able to know and understand what you've called the church to in this time, in Jesus' name. Amen? Now, we have been looking, we've been talking about tower versus tower. I'm going to tie in a little bit from this past weekend, uh, just because it's very pertinent for us today. And so, we've been talking about tower versus tower and what it means to really walk with God. When, what we did with tower versus tower is that we, used, we stood on the scripture that the righteous run in. Uh, let's go to Proverbs 18.10. Let me, let me just go there. Proverbs 18.10. We've talked about how in this time... The scripture we've been standing on is the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in, run into it and are safe. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Again, David would, or Solomon would write this proverb after seeing his father write the, write the literal psalm of Proverbs 18, 2 or 3, where it talks about the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Why? Because Solomon had heard of his dad and what he had done and how God had continued to move upon him. And so we see that the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and are safe. And we've talked about tower versus tower because one of the things that happens is that we also have the place in Genesis where they built the Tower of Babel. And and if you look in, in Genesis chapter 9, one of the things they said was, I will build, we will do, it will be to us. It was all about us. And not about God. So God came down and confused him. And today, unfortunately, we are having people who are building their own Tower of Babel. I just showed Becky last night a video where in Russia someone was trying to rebuild the Tower of Babel. It somehow caught fire. I was like, wow, that doesn't say something. I'm not trying to be you know, stupid about it, but I'm just kind of like, I don't think he wants it built, guys. I really don't think he wants it built. So we have to understand that the Lord is moving on the earth today, and we have to be ready and willing to build or get into his strong tower, not build a tower unto ourselves. To build a tower unto ourselves is foolishness, because what we do is we make it all about man and not about God. And God's called us to be a people who are righteous. Look at your neighbor and say, you are righteous. Can you turn the air down in here to cool it down just a bit? Everybody was singing and dancing and clapping, and it just made a lot of body heat. When I'm up here sweating, I know we're hot, right? Two minutes, you're going to be asking me to shut it off, I promise you. So what happens is this, though, is that we have to understand that there's been a lot of things that have taken place. What has taken place in the world has been that the church has stepped into entitlement, and we followed into a place where we're no longer walking in truth, but we're walking in half-truth, which is still lie. So we've got to cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Can you say amen? The fear of God is a good thing. The fear of God is needed in today's time. We especially need it. Now, this past weekend, we talked about Job 28, 28 says that the fear of the Lord is wisdom and to depart from evil is understanding. What does that mean? That means when I choose the fear of the Lord, the way that I choose the fear of the Lord is to depart from evil. People would say, well, I want the fear of God, then depart from evil. Well, what does that mean? I make the choice to say no to it. I make the choice to say, I'm not going down that road. I'm not, I'm not, in, I'm not entertaining those thoughts. How many of you all know that one of the things that unfortunately has happened has been in the midst of everything that's taken place, the church has fallen prey to some of the very thing that God hates. Proverbs 6.16 talks about the things that God hates. Yes, seven are an abomination. But he talks about a proud look, a lying tongue. Well, let me just turn there. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift and running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among the brethren. A proud look and a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift and running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among the brethren. Now we looked up what it means to gossip. Gossip is literally to tell something that's true of a person, but telling it to others when they don't need to hear it. I said this for several times now. Sometimes it's best just to keep your trap shut. 
right? Slander. Slander is to speak a half-truth and a lie to, about someone to others. That's what a slander is. To murmur is to complain about a thing in hopes of getting others on your side and murmuring sows discord among the brethren. That's what murmuring does. Why am I telling us this? Because these are the things that separate the church. These are the things that divide the church. These are the things that actually hurt the church in our times. To grumble means to say that your will is better than that current state that you are in. It's better than the will of God. Your will, to grumble means your will is better than the current will of God. To grumble takes no thought of God at all. I don't know about you, but sometimes he puts us through those trials so that we would draw close, right? Hey, how many of y'all, if you've been in military, just raise your hand for me, please. All right, so we have military men and women in here. So if you've been in military, how many of y'all know that the way they designed many of your trainings is that your trainings push you further than what you would have normally had? Would that be true, Phil? Would that be true? Why would that be unless they were trying to make you able to handle what would come, right? So sometimes we look at our trials and we say, these trials are so bad. Listen, the trials equip you for what the next thing in God is. I know we don't like it. We're like, no, we want to be blessed and highly favored. All right. All right. I'm just telling you, to our brothers and sisters overseas in the persecuted nations, They're blessed and highly favored is when we're reviled, when we're beaten, when we're persecuted, when we're we're shot, when we're beheaded. Those are their blessings of God. Blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you, for blessed are you in the kingdom of heaven, right? That's what the scripture says. So we have to understand that in the trials, God prepares us. So we don't want to be the ones that grumble when God's putting us in the midst of something because what happens is God is preparing us for what is to come. God is preparing us for what is to happen. God is preparing the church in this time to get ready because what the church has done, unfortunately, if you would go with me to Proverbs 7. And we were right there. Proverbs 7. And let's just look at verse 6. It says this, it says, um, for at, at the window of my house, so this is talking about the, the, my, my title and the, the heading of my Bible says, the crafty harlot. It says, for at the window of my house, I looked through my lattice and I saw among the simple, I perceived among the youths, a young man devoid of understanding, passing along the street near her corner. Let me just say this, you know when they said that they threw the, the, their, um, their cloaks down before the, at the feet of the young man, Paul, do you know that, that actually... At that point in time, a young man was considered between 40 and 45 like from, and, and under. Some of us are still young, I'm just saying. I'm not there, but I wish I was. I'm closer, but I'm just saying, at that time, that's what they considered young. It's very interesting because it said a young man devoid of understanding. So it doesn't matter our age that what the enemy goes after is that place of devoid of understanding. That's why we want to have an understanding heart. Job 28, 28 says, The fear of the Lord is wisdom. To depart from evil is understanding. A man devoid of understanding, a people devoid of understanding, do not depart from evil. But they enter into Proverbs 6, 16, where these six things the Lord hates, yet seven are an abomination. I'm not mad at anybody. I'm just simply telling you, folks, we've got some things going on in the church that we've got to get rid of. We've got some things going on in our hearts. I don't, I don't know about you, but man, I know that I, I'm either going to go stand before Jesus at, at, when I take my last breath, or he's going to return, and I want to make sure I'm right. And I want to make sure that what happens is in the midst of everything, I'm not standing in any false sense of security or false point of religion where I'm thinking I've already made it when the truth is I haven't. I want to be in that place where I depart from evil. I want to be in that place where I step in and I say yes to the Lord. So it says a young man devoid of understanding in verse 9 of Proverbs 7. Passing along the street near her corner, he took the path to her house in the twilight of the evening, in the black and the dark of night. And there a woman met him with the tire of a harlot and a, crafty, and a crafty heart. And she was loud and rebellious. Her feet would not stay home. At times she was outside, at times in the open square, lurking at every corner. She caught him and kissed him. 
with an impudent face, she said to him, I have peace offerings with me. Today I've paid my vows, so I came out to meet you diligently to seek your face and have found you. I have spread my bed with tapestry, colored the coverings of Egyptian linen, colored coverings of Egyptian linen. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, and myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until morning. Let us delight ourselves with love, for my husband is not at home. He has gone on a long journey. He has taken a bag of money with him and will not come home on, and will not come home on the appointed day. So her enticing speech caused him to yield with her flattering lips. She seduced him. Let me say this. Flattering lips are one of the worst things you can, that you, you can have when someone tells you, well, you're really doing good. Man, you, I bet you feel really good about this, don't you? Like, right there's a mark. Why? Because flattering lips seduce. Flattering lips pervert. So we have to be so careful in these times to understand what's going on. And we know we, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we understand this, that the enemy is coming out. So in Proverbs 7 here, in this scripture of, of 6 to 21, we see there were several things, several things that happened. There was seduction, seduction to pleasure. We see in this that there was rebellion. Folks, here's the thing. When the church rebels against the word of God, knowingly rebels against the word of God, that is witchcraft. Sure, it's quiet as Presbyterian Church. When the church, why would I say that? Because in the Old Testament, here when when um, when they would look and, and and Solomon, or I'm sorry, Samuel confronted King Saul, he said, "Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft." That's what the Scripture says. So when we rebel against the Word of God, we've entered ourselves into witchcraft because we've now put our own self above the Word of God. Pride is the very thing that begins to bring us into rebellion to the Word of God. Pride says, again, we joked about it, but remember the song, I Did It My Way? Yeah, that is literally the song that at times the church is singing unbeknownst to them when they do things their way. That pride begins to elevate themselves above everything else. And so what we have to understand and what we have to do is we have to realize, folks, now's the time for the church to wake up. And now's the time for us to get rid of the pride and the entitlement that has come along. It brings impulse. See, pride brings just spontaneous impulses where you think you're entitled. Pride brings us all this stuff. And here's the thing about it is that when we begin to, when the church begins to feel entitled, the church has lost its humility. When the church has lost its humility, the church is now being able, is not being able to properly hear from God. Jesus said, I did not come to be served, but to serve. And to give my life as a ransom for many. What does that mean? That means in our lives for us to go after God, for us to do what the Lord's called us to, sometimes it's going to cost us something. And in those times when you're going through the trials, when you're going through the situations, when you're going through the circumstances, sometimes you want to gossip. Sometimes you want to grumble. Sometimes you want to slander. Sometimes you want to murmur. But the best thing to do is to keep your mouth shut. At that point in time, the best thing for you to do is to say, no, I'm going to go after God. I'm going to take this before the Lord in prayer. I'm going to take this before the Lord in prayer. Somebody come up to you and say something. Well, I think you should do this or I think you should do that. Or they try to begin to do something to you that you don't feel peace about. You need to say, I'll pray about that. Look at your neighbor and say, I'll pray about that. See, that's one of the things that has to happen. Folks, we've got to realize is that today, the church has got to come out of this place of pride and come into this place of true humility. Now, what happens is, is that the Lord in His grace and His love, He wants His church to be ready because there's a lot of things that is coming, is coming down the pike. There's a lot of situations that are going to be happening. I can tell you right now that from the beginning of the pandemic to right now, nothing has been the same. Nothing has been the same. It's not. It's not been the same at all. Why? Because we're now in a season of change, tremendous change. And you've got to be willing to adapt to the change. And if you try to elevate yourself above the word, let me tell you, you automatically put yourself in rebellion. Because when I, when I try to elevate myself above the word, I put myself at friendship with the world, which is enmity towards God. I can't, it won't work. You have to bring yourself 
into that place of humility and say, Lord, I know I don't deserve anything I've gotten. You've been so good to me. You've been so, so good to me. I don't deserve anything. But because you've been so good, I will sing of your goodness. Because you've been so good. Listen, some of us, we need to celebrate the fact that we're still alive. Amen? Some of us, we lived through some major trials. Some of us have lived through some major diseases. Some of us are still battling and and getting through those diseases. But what happens is this, is that in other times, some of us don't even realize that it was the grace of God that kept us when, folks, we should have been dead a long time ago. Sometimes we don't realize it was the grace of God that kept us when those people that we thought were our buddies and our friends and everything else and they wanted us to go driving at certain times of the night weren't actually our buddies and our friends and there was actually a demonic assignment against our lives. But praise God, He kept us. And so when we realize that and we understand that, then we step in and we say, okay, now I'm going to step in and begin to walk in true humility. True humility, which says in the midst of the situations and circumstances, I'm going to trust the Lord. In the midst of the situations and circumstances, listen, the, the, ta- the name of the Lord is a strong tower. I'm going to run into the strong tower of the Lord. What does that mean? How you, why are you saying that? Because here's what's happening when I, when I do this. When everything is, is coming against me and I want to lose it. How many of y'all have ever had those emotions that overtake you sometimes? And you're like, it's not a righteous anger. You're just flat out mad. Right? You're just hot under the collar and you're going to let somebody. I mean, you're like that teapot. <whistles> you're really getting loud now. I'm going to let them have it, Right? At that, point in time, at that point in time, you've got to come over and you've got to begin to submit yourself to the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. I'm going to come to the Lord and I'm going to begin to stay in Him. So I'm going to do what the Word says. I'm going to depart from evil. Well, I really want to let it go. I don't deserve anything. I'm not saying we're, I'm not saying we're trash. The blood says we're worthy. See, He loved us so much, but I understand I really don't deserve this. This is too good for me. If I walked up to some people, now some people are different, so, and I know we've got different personalities here. Now if I walked up to certain people and I said, I've got you, I love Toyota Tundras, I got you a brand new Toyota Tundra, a 2000, a 20, 2023 Toyota Tundra. Some people would be like, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't take this. This is, this is way too good. Others? Yeah, right? Just saying, praise the Lord. Some of y'all can look straight ahead or laugh, whatever you want to do. But when we look at what God has given us and that he gave his own son for us, we realize I'm really not entitled to anything. It's by grace and his mercy that I am where I am. So in the midst of really letting those things go, I'm going to say, no, no, I want to be everything that he wants me to be. I'm going to run into him. In the midst of all the, 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 the things that want to try to get us to withdraw in, maybe you're dealing with rejection, maybe you've had some things go on, maybe you're dealing with past trauma, whatever it may be, and you want to hold back and keep that place of isolation, what happens is you have to run into the name of the Lord because his name is the strong tower. I'm not going to stay in that place of fear because the fear that's tried to be released least on the earth, I'm not going to stay there. I'm going to stand in the place of where his name is a strong tower. So I'm going to realize he's as good as he says he is, and I'm going to continue to walk with him. So I choose the fear of the Lord. I choose the love of God. I choose to walk with him. I choose to know what it means to really understand and know, have the knowledge of the Holy One. I choose to walk with him. If you look at Proverbs chapter 1, I'll do this and then I'll, let, I'll stop for today and we'll begin to take up communion. But Proverbs chapter 1. Now wisdom is very, now here's the thing that's very interesting to me. The church has the decisions to make. The church has the understanding that we that needs to have the understanding. Every second of every moment, of every hour, of every day, you have a decision to make. And that decision is, if you, if you read Proverbs 1, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but Proverbs 1, verses 20, yeah, 20 through 33, you understand that those who listen to the Lord, wisdom, wisdom, cries out just as the harlot cries out. 
Wisdom is in the city crying out, just as the harlot is in the city crying out. You are offered two voices. You're, ha- you're offered the choice of one of the two voices. And what you choose and what you do will determine how your life will go. And so what you have to do is you have to understand that we have to choose to really follow after wisdom. In Proverbs 21-29 it says, Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. See, the fear of the Lord has to be chosen. You have to choose. By grace we receive the love of God. By choice we walk in the fear of God. Let me say it again. By by grace, we receive the love of God. By choice, we walk in the fear of God. That's not legalism. That's just growing up. Right? By grace, you turn 16 and get your driver's license. Right? By choice, you you choose to stay between those lines. Right? Some of us may need better choices than others. Praise the Lord. I've watched some of you drive. Oh, Jesus, I'm praying for him. Right? So we understand this, that what happens is that the Lord is bringing about an understanding to the church for the church to get ready to choose the fear of the Lord. We choose wisdom. We choose wisdom. But see, what's happened is that, folks, it's a moment-by-moment choice that you have to make. You can choose to walk in rebellion to the Word of God, which is witchcraft, or you can choose to walk in the wisdom of God, which is love, honor, and and, and humility, and begin to honor the Word of God greater than anything else. Because when I choose to walk with God, then at that point in time, I'm going to see the goodness of God overtake me in the land of the living. Proverbs Proverbs 27, I believe it's verse 13, said, I would have lost heart. Had I not believed that I would, see your, I would see your goodness in all the days of my life. In other words, in the land of the living. One of the translations says, in the land of the living. So, I'm going to choose to walk with God. See, David had to choose to walk with God. I don't know about you, but I mean, going to face Goliath. And facing Goliath's one thing. I'll fight him. Yeah, I mean, okay. But then having your brothers, your older brothers tell you, I know the pride that's in your heart. Like, I mean, dude, you're not getting up here. You're, what are you doing? Go hide behind your bush. But David was the one that said, yeah, I'll fight him. He could have dishonored him. Having a leader, having the king of Israel come after you, first you play the harp that, 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 that soothes his, his, his tormented soul, and now you're going, and now he begins to try to throw spears at you. And he could have absolutely just tore into King Saul, but he wouldn't do it. Why? Because he chose to follow after God. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. I have to humble myself to walk in that. It's very interesting in Israel, the, the towers, they, they have certain towers, certain places, and we, have, we was able to go up on the top of this, this building. And as you go up on the top of this building, they, they talk about this, and they said, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. But you have to kneel down to get underneath this door. It's very interesting. Because if you kneel down to get underneath this door, then you walk in, and now you're at a place where now you can go up into the strong tower. So it's a point of humility. And that's what the Lord's called the church to in this time, is that we get ready for what is coming. We get ready to be prepared that in this season, folks... People are going to need the Lord. People are going to need the Lord. You are going to be used in ways you never thought possible. Look at your neighbor and say, this is exciting times. You're going to be used in ways you never thought possible. You're going to be telling people about Jesus in ways you never thought you would. There are going to be people who are going to come to you in ways you never thought they would. And there are people that you never thought would come to you are going to come to you. You're like, why would you come to me? You don't even like me. Praise the Lord. But when we humble ourselves, we'll be ready for whatever the Lord has for us. Amen. Amen. If I could get, uh, Steve, would you go back and, and tell the, the, uh, the kids and the teens, everyone that we're, we're going to take up communion here. So as we do, one of the things uh, that we want to do is we want to understand that we want to be ready for everything that God has. There's a lot of things that's going to be moving Folks, when you come in, you should be ready to just say, I want everything God has. I want to hear the word. 
I want to encounter the Spirit of God, and I want to be equipped for every good work. I said this during the conference. Nobody goes out to build a house without having first power tools. There are gifts that are given to the body of Christ. You should desire to operate in those gifts. Now, the gifts are not the preeminence. The fruit is the preeminence. What we've done in the past in charismatic churches, Pentecostal churches, and full gospel churches, we've made the gifts the preeminence. That's not the gifts. That, that's not the preeminence. Men will, say, or men will come to the Lord at the last day and say, didn't we prophesy in your name? Cast out demons in your name. Do all these mighty signs and wonders. And he'll say, depart from me. I never knew you. What's the preeminence? The fruit. The fruit is that which is most important. So we have to be willing to say yes to the Lord and come into him. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand to our feet. Father, today in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just thank you, Father, for all the things that you have done and all the things that you're doing. Father, I pray that you would continue to move upon us with this understanding in this hour, that, Lord, we would be willing to humble ourselves under your mighty hand. Father, that we would be willing to truly step into a place, Father, where we say, Lord, not my will, but your will. Not my way, but your way. God, let us be a people who honors your presence in all that we do and all that we say. In the name of Jesus, amen? Amen. Well, we're going to go ahead and, and uh, go ahead and dismiss from the live stream. Thank you guys for watching on live stream. Amen. Those who, who want to stay for communion. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in with us. I pray that this message today has encouraged you. I pray that it's challenged you, uplifted you. I pray that you came away from this message and this encounter with God, knowing that you have literally stepped into a place where you have heard the heartbeat of God and through everything. Now, in this time, I want to talk to you. Maybe you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, or your relationship is not where it needs to be. Maybe you've walked with God at one point in time, and you're no longer walking with Him. Or maybe you say that you're a Christian, but deep down inside, you know there's compromise in your heart. If that is you, I want you to go ahead and pray this prayer with me, so that what can happen is we can talk to each other again when we see each other, either in the church or in heaven. So let's go ahead and pray. Just repeat after me. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your son's blood. I thank you for the life of Jesus and for his resurrection. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I repent of them now, and I ask for you to wipe me clean by your blood. Come into my heart. I receive your salvation. And I receive you as my Lord and as my Savior. I walk away from my old life and I walk into my new life. Thank you, Lord. I am born again. In Jesus' name. Now listen, if you prayed that prayer, you are now born again. What I would ask for you to do is I would ask for you to contact the ministry, contact the church, and let us get to you some free material so that you can begin to receive discipleship. See, it's not enough just to pray a prayer. We want you to be discipled. Jesus said, make disciples of all men. So what we want to do is we want to help you in your walk. We want to help you to where you're being able to be discipled and you're being able to walk with Jesus on a daily basis. So thank you so much. God bless you.